snow. Come on, where is it? Dave, it's your Idaho Central app here. Any chance you're missing a debit card? Let's get that taken care of for you. With ICCU's card control, you can turn any card off with the tap of your finger. You've got it. And back on again. Ow, 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 ow. The closest Idaho Central Credit Union branch is in your pocket. Ooh, the gym. Mold stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller. In a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and ten 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, BJ Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, how we doing, Boise State fans? Welcome on in to a fresh live Lithia Ford, a Boise a Wednesday edition of Bronco Nation News Live. We got Johnny Ball game there in the KTIK studios downtown. I am in the Cutwater Spirits mobile studios here in Meridian. And uh, Johnny, it's Wednesday. It's a little cloudy, a little cool, uh, but uh, we got plenty to talk about today, man. How you doing? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, pro day yesterday, spring practice yesterday. I mean, it sure does, you know, with the calendar, BJ, gives Boise State fans an easy transition to get over that basketball hangover and have other stuff to sink their teeth into. So I know practice, I believe we're back on the field tomorrow for yep. spring ball. And uh, obviously a lot to talk about there with uh, everything that's going on, BJ. So yeah, another Wednesday with your boy ball game, your favorite day of the week reigns. And we are, I see you got the Mariners head on there opening day tomorrow. Ready. I wanted to wear a Mariner Jersey today, tomorrow. but I thought tomorrow, man. Up, tomorrow yep. is opening day. That's when I come to the office, basically in full Julio Rodriguez uniform and uh, get ready for another MVP season. This is the uh, yeah. I, I think you, I think you need to show up. Uh, show up to the uh, office tomorrow with the with the pants and the socks too. Can you go? Can you literally go full baseball uniform tomorrow for opening day? God, that's not a bad idea. I had not any baseball pants. Like, yeah, I don't have baseball pants, but I could go swing up by like Big Five and get some or something like that. Yeah, yeah cool. Would you, would you fit in a pair of Naismith's baseball pants? Maybe I can let you borrow never, some. I don't know. But, never, uh, BJ. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, open way, day uh, tomorrow. It's How cool is that? 
it's an aside, but it finally, for the first time in a while, MLB got kind of smart. All 30 teams play tomorrow for opening day. They had this weird thing where some teams didn't start till the next day for a while, and all 30 teams should play on opening day tomorrow. And uh, my Cardinals getting a chance to take down Shohei Otani and the Dodgers, man, right out of the gate. Love it. That's a killer series right from the get-go. Yeah, we've wait. got like our first five series, I think, were playoff teams from last year. So we could be about two and thirteen by the time uh we get rolling here. But uh we'll talk we'll talk baseball. Uh, you guys will talk baseballs with Bob, uh cover baseball with Bob coming up on your show. We'll have plenty of time to talk baseball on our show. But we were both at practice yesterday, Johnny. It was a little cool out there on the blue watching practice. Uh, and then we made our way into the uh, indoor facility, into the uh weight room for pro day. Uh, big day yesterday for pro day and, uh, plenty to talk about. Do you want to touch on the, uh, practice first or get right into pro day? Uh, the practice, um, it was cold out there, BJ, uh, a lot of plays being made. I thought, um, they got after it. There is an intensity level that I'm not sure I've seen in past springs. It feels like I have to when I'm watching these practices, I have to like pinch myself and go, oh yeah, it's March. It feels like fall camp. So I, I would like the intensity. If I was going to pass anything on to the fan base, um, plays are being made. Players are working really hard. There's a level of competition there. The coaches are fired up. They run from station to station. Just everything Spencer Danielson, I think his dreams in a program and how he wants practice to look, I think it's looking like that. So far, long way to go, obviously, but that's the message I would relay to Bronco Nation right there. There's a lot of effort, a lot of plays being made, and dudes want to help and want to play a lot of snaps on this team. Yeah, I, I saw uh, Ashton Genty make a really nice catch out of the backfield at one point and had some big yards during a team period, and Austin Bolt had a nice catch. But, uh, yeah, it was their first practice in 10 days or whatever after spring break, so they kind of, uh, you know, uh, got back to it. And they'll practice Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday pretty much for each of the next four weeks here. Uh, they got a couple close scrimmages on Saturdays coming up, the spring game obviously on the 20th. So they'll be back out there tomorrow. Spencer Danielson scheduled to talk to the media after practice tomorrow as well uh and so plenty of uh, coverage of the current team uh coming up over the next couple of weeks but i wanted to spend most of today johnny talking about pro day what we saw yesterday and i was gonna wait a little uh longer uh into the show before i brought this up but uh boise boise brings up uh, asking if there's any chance ball game gets a mini camp invite after the vertical he displayed yesterday uh johnny we've got the clip here maybe talk us through this uh Major props, man. I would not have done this. There was no chance in heck uh, you could have got me to do this. But uh, you got uh, a little peer pressure, and you went through with it, man. Major props to you. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was the, the event was over. We were transitioning into the indoor. <laughs> Wustro's got his phone out. You son of a gun, Wustro. What are you taping this for? Um, Dirk Cutter comes up to me and says, ball game, would you jump? And I said, dude, what are you talking about? He said, you didn't jump? Okay, no, nope, no, nope, come on, come on. And Cutter grabs me and just walks me to the station. And Dirk Cutter has a ton of pull. So Dirk Cutter says, hey, he's talking to NFL scouts. Stop, stop, wait, wait, wait a minute. We got one more. We got one more jumper. It's Johnny ball game from KTIK Boise. And, you know, he, I don't, stinking cutter, man. I couldn't say no. You, you would have said no, BJ. Oh, no chance. Literally no chance that I'm, that I would have got up there in front of all those people and done that. Cause here people were, people were saying you had to hit the first number or the first, uh, stake yeah. there, whatever they call it. That's 18 inches just to get to the first one. And there was yeah. talk, there was a little, you know, murmur amongst the crowd that you weren't even going to get to the 18. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, there was, you know, there was folks, and then and then I think you earned major respect when you wanted your second attempt. Everybody got two attempts, so here's the first attempt. You backed up a little bit. Um, let's see. what what you what you make of the of the of the. Uh, I, the I wish I was 20 years younger because I could jump. I mean, dang it! And and I look at myself now, and that just shows getting old. You do the same thing you did 20 years ago, but you just don't jump as high, BJ. So uh, yeah, right here, a lot right of here. Right here, when you went for the second one, you wanted your second attempt. You earned some more props. People are like, oh, oh, he wants a second one. Okay, okay. But then you uh, – I thought you were going to go higher, man. I really did. You were close to it. Oh, man. Major props, though, Johnny. Seriously, no chance uh, no chance at all that you could have got me to get up there in front of uh, the trainers and the scouts and all those people. And and uh, I would have – I don't – there's no – I mean, 
And then, you know, no offense to my other friends in the media here, but we were talking about this afterwards. You, you probably would have won. That, that's probably the highest of anybody in the media. Maybe a Jay Tuss. I think he's more suited for the bench press. He's got but, too uh, much weight. Tuss I, has I, too much weight. I don't I think, think he, he could probably, jump at all. Probably take the uh, the media crown for for the uh, for the vert there. Skinny people can jump high. You know, we don't have any weight we're bringing with us. Um, Frank Sinatra once said, "Dare to wear the foolish clown face." Okay, and. I've certainly done that on a few occasions in my in, in my life, in my media career. You know, sometimes just say screw it, do it, and uh, yeah. Uh, let's can we talk about some real stuff? But thank you for bringing that up. That was fun. Um, it got a lot of attention prop, on social that, media. That drops in the comments. You, man. Yeah, because well, of you. It, I was giving. I wasn't doing it to make fun of you or anything. I was giving you mad props. No chance in heck I would have done that. So kudos to you. And now you have three hundred and sixty-five days. To uh to try to beat uh try to beat the last the, the mark you got to go higher than twenty inches next year. I have nil. Or I'm sorry. I have naia eligibility. Mike Morosky, I saw you there. Hey, you need a receiver. You need a slot guy, Morosky. Well, I got you. Let's go. Do you, actually, Yo, here. do you actually have eligibility at the naia level? No, I'm a college graduate, uh, okay. amazingly. But, yeah, I don't think I do. But, I mean, NAI really doesn't even have eligibility in some cases. This is pretty cool, by the way, for people who don't know. We asked every football coach in this state at the collegiate level to give us one of their helmets so we could have in our studio. And if you can see here, we, yeah. we have the Vandals, the Broncos, the Yotes, and then Idaho State. And didn't uh, the Broncos give you one with 95.3 on it, too? I think that was a pretty cool... Uh... Yeah, we have two BSU ones. One we have outside when you walk in the building, and then this one, kind of the old school, just the classic kind of Ryan Dinwiddie, okay. I'm going to drop 77 points on your ass helmet. But this one, this is sweet, dude. I'm sorry, but the Idaho State Bengals have a hot lid, dude. The number on one side... The logo on the other, and this was the the, the the very memorable Charlie Ragel era of Idaho State football. Very, Ragel very hooked us up yes. with this, but uh, cool That's deal cool. we have in here, BJ. I did hear uh, I did hear two uh, an Idaho State player and a C of I player at the pro day talking about Cody Hawkins. Uh, me and Jay were standing there and we overheard them talking, and now uh, of course the Vandal one, the nicest one on the, of the bunch, I assume. Mm -hmm. All right, sorry, BJ. Okay, pro day. We had some some great performances, some unbelievably uh, sad heartbreak with Billy Bowens going down. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, let's start with the positives, Johnny. Uh, and before the injury, Billy Bowens had a great day. I thought Steph Cobbs did some things. I thought Kate Beresford had a really, really nice day as well as he tries to get an opportunity, maybe sneak into the seventh round, probably be a free agent guy. Uh, George Helani didn't do any of the uh, testing. He just went out there and did some receiving uh, running back drills and then also did some punt return drills as well. I have some clips that I'll play as we're talking about this, Johnny, but uh, well, overall, what was your takeaway? And the first clip is Kate Beresford, 23 reps on the bench. That was a nice start to the day. He was the very first guy to go. Twenty-three reps, got everybody going. And as I said, I thought Beresford was one of the uh, one of the positives today. Uh, yesterday, I like, Beres I like Beresford a lot. BJ, I mean, he's a he's a back-to-back -back all league player. I felt that he was kind of a professional in college. He started games in the Pac-12 at Wazoo. Um, big, physical, and athletic lineman. He moves well. He can play multiple positions. He is going to be in a camp, and he needs to hope he can pull a Scott Matlock. No combine invite, but kick butt on your pro day and get drafted anyway. Yeah, I really liked what I saw from, from Cade Beresford. I think he's got a real chance to get into it. We'll hear from him in a minute. I got a clip from him, a clip from Halani, and a clip from Steph Cobbs. Uh, but... Uh, Steph Cobbs, what did you think of Steph Cobbs' workout? Uh, you know, it wasn't as good as Billy Bowen's, I didn't think, but Steph Cobbs showed me, especially in the receiving 
part of, and I think that's where Steph's going to help you the most. Steph's not going to be a guy who's going to go blow up a combine, but you put him in pads, you put him out there, and you have him run routes, and I think he can get the job done. Maybe Steph Cobbs, and he said, and he even said this, right, BJ? He was like, I just wanted to see what we could do. He doesn't have any 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 set plans on on what his next step is, but he wanted to show some NFL scouts what he could do, and I thought he did a pretty good job. But Billy Bowens, there's Shaq, Andrew Van Buren watching their guys. Um, I thought he did a pretty good job, though, Steph Cobbs, and hopefully he gets a mini camp invite and he wants to continue playing. There's an opportunity for Static. I think he's a really good dude. He's going to impress a lot of people. Um, he's a good player. I just don't know if – if he's a guy that's going to hang around in an NFL camp, BJ, uh, everybody in the NFL camp, it's like they look like Prince Strawn in those type of guys, right? They are massively built like NFL receivers. Uh, Static's more of a slot guy. I don't know where his opportunities are, but hopefully he has some. He's a good dude. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, by uh, the way, so, yeah. the guy who conducts the pro day, Yes. Why did he change teams? I don't know. But the Broncos must have been uh, liking what he was doing for the Falcons. He was a Falcon scout and then uh, moved to the, to what the, we were all surprised. Look at that. That's the, that's the vertical, by the way. 39 and a half. That was we'll Billy. Yeah. The guy yeah. on the bottom left of the screen. Yeah. He always runs this every year at Boise State. So anyway, now he's with the Broncos. Closer flight from, the, from the, Atlanta, BJ. Was this the highest uh, 39 and a half? Was that the highest vertical you've seen at a pro day? I'm trying to remember, man. That was pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, I don't remember a higher one, but I, I don't, BJ. I mean, you look at the Billy Bones numbers, too. I mean, across the board when they yeah, released them. Yeah, I've got those. I'll put those, the, I'll put those on the screen in a second there. But uh, there's uh, Kate Beresford running the 40. Kind of an interesting thing for some of these guys, John. You got all these scouts, and they're all wearing their team polos, and they all got the stopwatches and the notepads. And, um, you know, for guys like Ethan Card and some of these guys, it's maybe their only chance, their last chance to try to uh, live out that dream uh, as a pro, you know, pro player. And some of these guys are saying, hey, I'll go XFL. I'll go whatever. I guess now it's called the, the UFL, which, by the way, Battle Hawks, St. Louis Battle Hawks uh, season opener on Saturday, Johnny. I'm having a watch yeah, party. You're not going to get in that league this year. You're not going to get in that league this year, unfortunately. That league's already started. Yeah, watch party Saturday at my house if you're interested. Two o'clock. Be there. We open up in Detroit. Big game. Um, but uh, you know, I uh, you know, you see all the, the the parents were there, the girlfriends, the families. Um, and this is this is a big day, Johnny, for for guys like Cobbs and Bowens, and even for a guy like Kalani. He's obviously going to get his chance, but he wants to get drafted. And he said he wanted to show teams that he could catch balls out of the backfield and do some things. And yeah. and um, you know, again, I can't see every route but uh, I, I thought uh, I thought uh, pe you know folks in particular Holani there's Billy Bowens right there I thought Holani had a good day George Holani I didn't see drop a pass okay not one I'm not sure any of those guys did to be honest did Cobbs or Bowens either I didn't see Cobbs or Bowens either I saw one of the Idaho State guys and there wasn't I, mean, I don't know if it was a great ball but yeah there was not a lot of balls on the crowd yesterday George looked really good and the more I see George, the more I talk to people, the more I, I talk to George, the more I kind of think that that streak for Boise State fans is going to continue and they're going to have another player drafted. I think he has a lot of notable people, George does, in his corner, i.e. Dirk Cutter, who will gladly accept a phone call on George's behalf. Um, he's never going to be a star, I, I wouldn't think, in the NFL. I wouldn't think George Helani is going to be maybe even a career of Alexander Madison. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But I think he's going to battle tough for a job, and I think he has a good chance to get drafted. Um, all those routes, everything that he wanted to do that he felt he wasn't able to do with the combine, yeah. that's what he was doing yesterday. That was all George's pro day. Anything I didn't get to show people at the combine, we're going to show people now. I had a good talk with George's agent yesterday at pro day there in the Blamire with Prater, and uh, they're pretty excited about George's prospects. And agents are agents, and you've talked to a lot of them too. I don't think you've ever talked to an agent who didn't think his client was going to get drafted. But, uh, yeah, they're they're pretty excited in Halani's camp that they feel he is going to get drafted. 
Remember James Webb's agent saying he had a chance to sneak into the first round and then he didn't even get drafted. Yep. Uh, yeah, they're going to yep. say whatever they want to say to hype up their client. Let's hear from George Jelani. We had a chance to catch up with George Jelani. Here's about a 90 second clip, three questions or so. Uh, and the final question I asked was about uh, him and the opportunity to extend that streak to 14 years of getting drafted into the NFL. And great uh, just being able to be out here, catch some balls and do some position drills and um, just continue to show the scouts what I can do. What did you want to show them today? Uh, that I can catch, <laughs> um, especially deep balls, being able to go out there, uh, run a wheel route and, you know, get those uh, those further throws. How nice was it going in today, not only having combine numbers, but having combine numbers that you were happy enough with that you didn't have to do those earlier drills? I think it was it was awesome, actually, uh, just being able to go out there and perform at the combine and, um, you know, just sitting down also with the family agent, discussing what, what I'm going to do at Pro Day and uh, all that good stuff. But it was pretty good, for sure. Was that a pretty quick decision after the combine that you weren't going to be doing the drills after Pro Day? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. What do you think your chances are? I mean, Boise State's got a streak, 14 straight years, guy getting drafted, and everyone's kind of saying you're their, you're their hope to, to keep that streak going. Now, what's just your thoughts on what, what you think you've done, if you have enough film, if you've impressed teams enough to, 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 to you know, get drafted somewhere? I mean, it's hard to tell right now, especially in the draft. You never know who can get drafted at, you know, what time. But, um, you know, hopefully I get drafted. Uh, that would be great for our streak. But uh, we'll see for sure. The uh, full interview with George Helani is available at uh, – the YouTube channel for Bronco Nation News. It's just youtube.com slash Bronco Nation News. I know Johnny, you and Prater. Uh, we're there waiting for the great interview, the great, you know, group interview like we got with everybody else. But Johnny and Prater, the the big dogs in the media, I guess, kind of got uh, George Solani pulled aside for for the one on one uh, uh, there out in the hall. So uh, folks can go back and listen to the podcast of uh, KTIK and your show yesterday for your one on one with George Solani. And again, the group interview is up on the uh, page as well. I have the uh, graphic, Johnny, with the, with the stats and all the numbers from Pro Day, but I want to take a quick first 90-second timeout, thank a couple of our sponsors, and uh, we'll play the uh, – we'll, we'll show the, the stats and continue the Pro Day discussion here in 90 seconds on Bronco Nation News. All Bronco Nation News broadcasts come from the Cutwater Spirits Canned Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of premix premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Spirits, perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Our title sponsor is RowPaint.com. For all your commercial, industrial, residential painting needs, check out RowPaint.com. Don't forget about their concrete coatings. Transform that ugly concrete slab on your back patio in your garage in just one day. Contact rowpaint.com for a free estimate today. The official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics and our title sponsor at Bronco Nation News is rowpaint.com. Idaho Central Credit Union has been helping members achieve financial success for more than 80 years. There's an ICCU branch on almost every corner, but the closest is in your pocket with free e-branch mobile and online banking. See why more than 500,000 members love ICCU and join one in four Idahoans by making the switch today at ICCU. Com. Since 1984, Ridley's Family Markets has prided itself on being a hometown food and drug store that employed value members of the local community. Ridley's Family Markets has 13 locations in the state of Idaho and many more in the surrounding states. Download the new Ridley's app to your smartphone, get savings up to 40% off at the checkout line, and find a location near you at shopridleys.com. Former Bronco Matt Bauscher is once again the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. No home is too big or too small for Matt and his team. Let them fulfill all your real estate needs at BauscherRealEstate.com. All right, Johnny, back here talking about Boise State Pro Day. We're going to hear from Cade Beresford, Steph Cobbs in uh, just a minute. Uh, here are the numbers. Uh, I have a great uh, crop job here on the uh, numbers, but uh, you can see uh, – the 40 yard dash, Billy Bowens, Billy Bowens. And I guess we should talk about his injury, Johnny. It was just so sad to see uh, him go down. He was having an unbelievable pro day by all accounts. You saw the 39 and a half inch vertical, the 4.46 40, 16 reps on the bench press for a wide receiver. He was having a heck of a day, literally a rep or two before he went down. I overheard a uh, Patriot scout telling someone that Billy Bowens is having a really, really good day. And then, unfortunately, Johnny uh, suffered an apparent knee injury uh, on a deep ball in the end zone and had to be carted off the field. He was uh, had his, fa his jersey over his face. He was sobbing in tears. It was just an emotional, sad moment for a guy that had worked really, really hard to get to this point because he was having a heck of a day. All right, man, that was uh, that was one of the that was one of the saddest moments 
I can remember in sports being right there up close to it. You know, I was I was standing right next to Spencer Danielson. Okay. Billy finishes another great rep, catches the ball, comes back, and and Spencer is talking to me and everybody else who's around about, you know, about the day Billy's having. And and Billy walks kind of by us, and Spencer goes, he looks at him and goes, Bill, nice job. And Billy, of course, looks at Spencer, says, yes, sir. Gets back in line. Spencer continues to talk about the day he's having and how hard he's working. Billy goes deep. The throw comes. He has to kind of adjust it in the end zone. It's on the far side, so we all had to look way down there. And I think he caught the ball, um, but he yeah. didn't get up. And and we just stood there, and and I could see because I was right next to Danielson. I could see Spencer live that, and I could see Spencer almost like a parent. Like seeing this go down and being like, uh, is he okay? Is he okay? And didn't know what to do. Didn't want to run over there instantly. Thought maybe he would get up. And then all of a sudden he didn't get up. And I think there was, and there was no trainers or anything down there, BJ, because it was the far end, right? No one was down there. So then they were waving people and Spencer ran down there. I didn't, I, I stayed where I was. I didn't want to go all the way in the end, in, in the, in the end zone like that. And, uh, you know, I don't know what was going on. I don't know if they were praying together. They probably were. Um, I think Jay Tust was even in tears a little bit. It was very emotional. It sucked. You want to talk about taking the, the air out of that building? BJ, that is the – I mean, you look at all those other players, all his teammates who were standing on the sideline. I mean, it was crickets. And yeah. at football players, that's the worst thing, right? That's the scariest thing ever. Pro day getting ready for the next step, having a great day. And then all of a sudden now facing that setback, I felt so bad. And I didn't hear, I didn't hear a lot of the sobbing until I did. I saw Billy pounding on the, on the turf. Cause it's like, you see sometimes when people pound, they know it's bad. Sometimes you can see a player when he knows it's a, tear or it's a break and you can just see him right there knowing what's in head of him sometimes you don't know hey let's go take a look at it um so i was like oh does billy know something and then and then i heard it what you were saying the sobbing when they were driving the cart off you just he let it all that emotion out and i love billy bones he was a really it was a pleasure to cover uh he's one of my favorite broncos down there uh highly intelligent guy gonna be really good at whatever he decides to do and um, he was working really hard for pro day, BJ. Everyone was saying Billy was in there. He was getting ready for this. And man, look at the numbers. I mean, that was an exceptional pro day he was having. He yep. was the story of the day until that happened. All anybody was saying is, hey, dude, Billy Bowens, he is catching everything. He's running fluid routes. Look at the, 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 the you know, a four, four, six. I saw a guy, an NFL scout who showed me a four, four, one. And he was pretty confident in his time. Um, you know, four four one, four four six, kind of all relative. But yeah, Billy was running under the four fives, which is you what you have to do in that league. I know he didn't have it on Saturdays. Uh, if you look at his career, a lot of cases. I mean, you, a lot of people thought maybe he should have been a little better. And I don't know what happened there. I know there was a lot of good receivers that Billy Bowens played with in six years at Boise State. NFL guys and future NFL guys, potentially. Um, I, I don't know what the next step is, but damn, BJ, that was really, really rough. I can't stop thinking about it either. I thought about it when I woke up. I thought about it when I went to bed. Just the whole emotion of the Cavan Williams yesterday, yeah. uh, seeing a very, very popular player. I was even talking to the the Idaho State wide receiver, that tall, fluid guy. I can't remember his name. He was working out with them, and he was like, man, this is when Billy was injured. And I was talking to him, and he was like, God, that guy. He's like, I didn't know. He didn't follow Boise State, but he's like, I I've never seen that guy work out. That guy is really good. Another receiver there was saying, like, man, that guy was having a day. Yeah. Really, really, really unfortunate situation. Yeah. Shaq is back in town to show support. To Billy Bowens and Static Cobb. So Khalil Shakir is there. He was, you know, I don't know if he was at the hospital with Spencer. I know he was with Billy yesterday after it happened. Khalil Shakir was. Um, I don't know if there's any new news. You would know more than anybody, BJ, but that was rough. 
Yeah, I was standing right by Ty Benefield and uh, Ashton Genty and a couple other guys. They were kind of behind that barrier. Then I was standing right by there. And, you know, they're saying, great catch, great catch. Yeah, Billy. And then you see him go down and not get right back up. And you hear, oh, no, 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 Billy. Come on, Billy. Come on. No. And then it was just, oh, and then it, you knew right away. And it was just, it was tough for everybody in the building, man. And, and, and the pro day is just one of those days, like I said, where it's just all the girlfriends are there, the families, the parents. And this is, you know, for a guy like Billy Bowens, one of his last shots probably to prove that he deserves a chance and that maybe the some of the tape wasn't, you know, who he really is or whatever. And and so there's just this dynamic where these kids are out there. They've been playing football their whole life, and they want to live that dream out and make it to the next level. And this is their one chance to show scouts. And I just hope a team still gives him a chance whenever he's healthy again because he showed so much, as you said, didn't drop a pass, was making crisp routes, was obviously was number one in all the statistics, as you said, 16 reps on the bench press, four four six forty, a four three one shuttle, six nine on the three cone drill. We mentioned yeah, the big 30, hands, BJ, big hands, six yeah. feet tall, like he was just. BJ, Look at his hands. His hands were yeah. as big as uh, his hands were as big as a lineman. Ethan Card, bigger than Cade Beresford. Uh, you know, every number on there stands out to you. He he, by all accounts, had the best pro day of anybody. And it, it was, you know, literally less than five minutes away from ending. And um, the worst the worst part yeah. of it, Johnny, was they, they took that break for a minute and then they, you know, kind of the show has to go on with Steph Cobbs and some of these guys still running their routes. So you had Spencer run down there, the trainers, there's five or six people around him. They're bringing out the cart, but they had to continue the pro day. And there's Steph Cobbs and some of these guys going through some long passes and plays while he's over there in serious pain, um, you know, just just several feet away. I thought that was a tough thing, but I guess you had to continue and try to take, you know, all the attention off of him. But, but that was kind of a weird dynamic too. Um, I mentioned Steph Cobbs. I thought Steph Cobbs had a pretty good day, Johnny. You know, he talked about the fact that he was injured, obviously missed the end of last season. And the first time he was cleared to run routes before pro day was like literally three or four days ago. So he wow. ran routes like one time and that was kind of not even a hundred percent. The first time Steph Cobbs got back out there and a hundred percent ran routes and took passes from a quarterback was at pro day. You would have never known that. I thought he had a really good day. I thought Steph Cobbs, Johnny was a guy that, um, you know, had the ankle injury was limited at times when he was healthy and he was feeling good and out there, he was a, yep. dynam a dynamic guy with the ball in his hands. He just says he's asking for a chance, whether it's CFL, UFL, whatever. I mean, he has some tape. He has some skill. I don't know if he, you know, I hope he gets some sort of shot because when he was healthy, I thought he was a dynamic player. I would have said, too, real quick back to Bowens after that workout. Before yesterday, I would have said, no, I don't think Billy Bowens will get an NFL rookie mini camp invite. That's kind of the lowest thing you can get. Because rookie mini camp, they just draft their players, they sign their players, they still don't have enough players for a rookie mini camp. So they bring in a ton of other guys and basically, hey kid, here's a weekend in the NFL. You impress us enough, we'll invite you to the next one, or we'll invite you to training camp, which is what they all want, a camp invite. I would have said no. But after that pro day, I would have said yes. I would have said, you know what? Yep, I bet a team invites Billy on a rookie mini camp. Static, I still think maybe that's possible. Um, not to have no no disrespect, but Joe Southwick was a Raider for a weekend. He got that call, BJ. You've seen it. And um, one of our favorite players ever, uh, pl favorite players ever, Kakala Kaniho. He had a rookie mini camp invite with the Cardinals a couple of years ago. They didn't ask him to come back, but he had his shot. So I can see Static being one of those guys too. And unfortunately, I would have said Billy as well but uh i don't see that happening i don't know the severity of the of the injury i don't know if you you probably do bj but you're not going to say um let's hope he's okay uh, at, at some point yeah yeah i am holding off on that for now from what i heard from some folks yesterday but it's it's not you know maybe better than than what it could have been but it's not not great early prognosis on that i do want to hear from steph cobbs though johnny on his day yesterday and then the, his last soundbite is about billy bowens and and how tough that was to see him go down it was good. It was a good day for me. Um, first, of all, I just want to thank God for the fact that I'm able to come out here and do it and do what I did today. Um, it's not a lot of people that could say they had a season in the knee injury and was able to come out and look pretty crisp. I felt crisp. I felt good. Um, I think I was able to show off that you know I didn't miss a step. So yeah, I felt real good. I and mean, I'm real, I'm real happy with my day. At what point did you know that you were going to be able to go today? Uh, since they told me that I was 
still gonna be able to do pro day. Okay. Right? So when I had my surgery, they told me I should be good by February. So give me a week. I said, oh, I'm gonna be fine then. Cause I, I know how I work. I know how how I heal. So I knew I was gonna be okay. Yeah. I was I was just anxious for the moment. What's mm -hmm. your rehab been like the last few months? Uh, I mean, a lot of stuff, man. When you uh, go through knee injuries, I mean, it's not just the knee. You got to take care of everything around you. So uh, it's just building up my whole body, uh, getting myself back aligned. I mean, um, I had my knee injury back at Fresno State, which I don't know what month that was, but I was out for probably two months, not really able to do anything at all. So um, it was just a lot of realigning, getting my body back, getting back in shape, getting my footwork back under me, and getting back comfortable, getting back comfortable how I run, how I feel. So how, bi how big was the day like today to show teams that you're, you're healthy and good to go? I mean, I think it was a big thing for me. Uh, more importantly, I kind of want to show myself that I could come through um, and get through anything. I mean, it's not the first time I went through adversity. Um, it's not the first time I had to, uh, you know, defy the odds. So I I'm proud of myself, man. I really did this to do it for myself, man, show off for myself. But as far as the scouts, uh, I hope they saw that. Like I said, I didn't miss a beat. Um, I'm still quick, I'm still smooth in my route. So, you know, hopefully they saw that and they you know, took note on that. What would you most pleased with on the numbers or whatever that you put up with the... Uh, I say my I say my broad because my broad before my injury was like nine four something like that. I, I wanted to get that ten. I got like nine eleven. I don't have, but the fact that I was able to improve still, I, I was so happy about that. So yeah, that's my biggest one. What, what how, much, how much do you feel for Billy? Obviously, having just gone through what you went through. Yeah, man. I mean, I almost teared up. I kind of had to. Uh, I kind of had to lock back in, shake back up because you know we came in together. Uh, we've been tight since day one, since two thousand eighteen. Um, Billy showed out today. I mean. And everybody could see that. Billy did his thing. He looked good and everything. I think he was number one in all, in all aspects of testing. So um, just knowing knowing Bill, man, I know he's going to bounce back. Um, I just want him to know, like, he keep his head up. The scouts saw what you could do. And um, just keep uh, going through this process. And, you know, I'm going to be with him every step of the way, no matter what. Yeah, again, hoping for the best for Billy Bowens and, and uh, Steph Cobbs, too. Hope he gets an opportunity uh, that he uh, certainly deserves. And, and again, when he's healthy, he was a dynamic playmaker with the ball uh, in his hands, Johnny. Do you want to thank a couple of quick sponsors, Lithia Ford of Boise. Check them out, LithiaFordBoise.com. You can view their full inventory of vehicles. Five NIL deals, including Andrew Simpson, Ahmed Hassanin, and Matt Lauder on the football team. They're driving Lithia Ford rigs, as is the Reigns family. Uh, we purchased ours. Couldn't be happier. So check them out. With the afford Boise. Dot com. You looking for a job? Taco Bell is hiring. They're offering free food while you work, and you get half your pay the very next day after your shift. So if you don't want to wait three weeks to get that first paycheck, you need a new job, check out TacoBellWorks.com. Get more information, the freestanding Treasure Valley Taco Bell locations. And uh, we appreciate the Nicolason family and SON management for their support of Bronco Nation News. The Blue and Orange Store, you need some gear to get ready for that spring game? The Blue and Orange Store.com. Check them out, the Blue and Orange Store.com. Boise Town Square Mall, they're on the second floor next to Pro Image, or you can go to the Boise uh, online, the Blue and Orange Store.com, and get free shipping on any order over $40. And if you are out looking for a job, the trucking industry, transportation, compliance service can help you with the DOT, overweight permits, anything you need to get out there towing that first load in no time. Get more information, transcomservice.com, and they'll get you signed up and out there on the open road in no time. And uh, Bronco Brew Coffee, two of our sponsors, Johnny, working together, our friends over at Lean Feast, leanfeastmeridian.com. Check them out, leanfeastmeridian.com. And while you're there, that's healthy, fresh eating. Highly recommend it. Dave and his staff do a tremendous job. Karen loaded up the fridge yesterday with about 10 Lean Feast meals. So highly recommend the convenience, the ease of Lean Feast. But they now sell bags of Bronco Brew Coffee at Lean Feast. So check them out, broncobrew.coffee. You can order it online within 24 hours. You get fresh coffee roasted coffee right at your doorstep in the treasure valley but uh, you can also pick them up now at our friends at lean feast so check them out broncobrew.coffee and leanfeastmeridian.com we appreciate both of them okay johnny we got a little time left i wanted to uh talk Cade beresford for a minute too um we talked about him earlier um i think i think he's probably I would I don't say I don't know if a lock's too strong, Johnny, but I think at a minimum we feel he's going to get some opportunity. I, I would suspect, I would hope, as you said, multi-year starter, all league players started games in the Pac-12. Um, and I thought had a pretty good day. 23 reps on the bench and and uh, ran pretty good and and moved very well, I thought, in the in the drills. We're going to hear from him in a second, but uh, just your thoughts again on Cade Beresford. Yeah, I expect him to be an undrafted free agent uh quickly. Rather quickly, I think he'll be in a training camp um, and get that invite, get a, whatever the smaller signing bonuses are for undrafted rookie free agents. And uh, Cade Beresford's going to get a shot. Think 
I mean, <coughs> excuse me, George Tarlis got a shot with the Raiders, played some preseason games, as you know, you know, that type of that type of situation for some players. Um, I think Kate Bearsford is going to be in that boat, and I'm going to be rooting like hell for him to stick around and make it really hard uh, to uh, to cut that guy. Maybe he ends up on a practice squad. Like Kate Bearsford, coaches are going to love him. You're never going to have to worry about his availability. He can play multiple positions. Um, he's highly intelligent. He's going to pick up on your concepts and your schemes, and uh, he's going to be a nice piece. Hopefully, he has the, you know, the 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 the, the ability, the, the actual natural talent and the physical gifts and the ability to play tackle at the NFL. He's got a funny dad too. Harry's, you know, former player obviously here, and his dad was over there watching pro day and sent me a, a text message after he had finished the forty. He goes, "I'll allow it. You can go ahead and make it public that he ran a four eight. And I said, ah. "I said, well, I had heard four six. I'm trying to confirm first before I post." But uh, uh, he's his dad's cool. I like Harry good too. Family, funny guy, and uh, he was always one. I know this doesn't mean much, Johnny, but at practice, and you'd be walking by or something, or they'd be in the in the facility, like. Uh, Kate Beresford was always one of those guys that would say, you know, hello or hey, BJ, how you doing? Or always, always. you know, was, was always very kind and nice and, and definitely rooting for him. Let's hear quickly on, on how he thought his workout went from Kate Beresford. Yeah, I just wanted to do the best I possibly could. You know, some reps like the L and the 5105, we only get one rep on each, right? You got to do the best you can with that one rep. Give it all you got. You can't slip. If you slip, you got to finish through the line either way. But I just want to do the best I could, and I'm, I'm proud of all the guys that came out here. Um, everyone did a great job today, and it was good to see, you know, not just the work I did coming to fruition and stuff, but also the other guys that were around. It was good to see them come out and do well. So, Could you have imagined or hoped for a better day for you personally, though? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's some things. I mean, not, nothing was perfect overall, but I'm pretty happy with the numbers I got so far. I haven't seen everything, but um, once I find out the official numbers, um, I'm – I'll be happy either way. I can't control it at this point. It's out of my hands, so just see what happens. How big of a hope, you know, dream goal is it for you to get a chance to continue your playing career here? Yeah, I mean, I just want any opportunity that I get, whether it's undrafted, drafted, minicamp, whatever it is, I will take full advantage of that opportunity and, you know, give it everything I have on that field. And whatever opportunity I get, I'm going to be grateful for it and, you know, take the, make the most out of it. So, What were you most pleased with today based on what you did, you think? Um, overall, I mean, I wasn't expecting my bench to be like that. I just, it was kind of inconsistent when I was training it. And, uh, and, you know, the adrenaline kicked in today and that definitely helped out. Um, so that was good. And then my jumping, I mean, that's not huge for a line, but um, I'll take the numbers I got. And then, um, but everything else felt good running and, you know, everything we did, I felt solid on. So. We hear we hear that uh, from time to time, Johnny, where these guys come to pro day and like literally have literally put up numbers they've never put up before. Do you have a crowd? Yeah. You have a crowd. You have your teammates, your family. You got that adrenaline pumping. He did twenty three reps on the bench press. He said he's never done that in his training. He just got out there and uh, all of a sudden <laughs> just felt this extra energy and got some extra reps and he gets twenty three. That's what you want, man. And and I think that's what NFL scouts want. Okay, the pressure's on. It's go time now or never. Whatever cliche get it done. Kate Beresford got it done. I thought it was funny too. And I'll take a little shot at, at Cade and Harry, his dad. I think it was, uh, I think it was Ron that asked a question about, Hey, has your dad been around to give you advice? You know, having gone through it or something. And Cade kind of took a shot at his dad and he's like, well, first of all, my dad never went through this, but yeah, he's been there to support me and I love my dad and it's great. And I thought that was kind of funny. Um, those guys are cool. I'll, I'll miss the Bearsfords, man. I know Jack, uh, he's no longer with the team. He was the brother of Cade who was walk, who had walked on for a couple of years. He's going to go do life now and figure out what his path is going to be, having just played ball with his bro for a couple of years. But hopefully the Bearsford family sticks around the BNN culture a little bit, BJ. They're good people. Uh, Johnny, uh, as I said, overall solid pro day for Boise State. We're uh, thinking about Billy Bowens. Hope he can recover fast and get a chance as well. We are about a what a month away, almost exactly, even a little less than a month from the from the NFL draft here. So uh, it's not very far away, uh, wow. and we'll, we'll continue to follow uh, what happens with George Helani and Cade Beresford and all these guys moving forward uh, towards the draft. I recommend folks go back. You guys had Khalil Shakir in studio yesterday. That that video segment is out there on social. The audio podcast posted as well. So hopefully, go folks will go back. And listen to your interview with Khalil Shakir. That was great stuff on KTIK. Uh, tomorrow, Johnny, Broncos back at practice. Uh, 
you know, same old, same old. I mean, we're watching the quarterbacks. We continue to see Maddox Madsen doing more and more. Um, not a lot of guys in yellow jerseys, which I guess is a good sign, but they do have a lot of guys not practicing at yeah. all. Um, yeah. But uh, just, just your take. They're starting to ramp things up here. As I said, it'll be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for the next four weeks leading up to the spring game. Yeah, just uh, continue to dot your I's and cross your T's, right? Um, keep the momentum, keep the enthusiasm high, uh, keep the tempo up, and it's fun to see these guys kind of develop and find their own identity and become the team that they're going to be. And, yeah, we're fixated on quarterback, but that's the case when you don't have a starter and you have players, you know, such as Maddox Madsen, Malachi Nelson, throw C.J. Tiller in there too. So we're all going to be paying attention for how those reps are divvied. But, yeah, it's been mostly Mad Dog so far. Uh, Malachi can't spin it, though. You know, I watched a lot. My favorite drill is watching the quarterbacks and the receivers go against the DBs. Uh, they do that for about 10 minutes, and you see a lot of plays. You see, okay, well, there's Austin Bolt. You know, he's going up against Marion McCoy. Who's going to win this matchup? What type of route is it? Who's at quarterback on this rep? Who's throwing him the ball? Who wins? Who loses? You see the defensive players. They make a big play. They're all amped up. I mean, offensive guys score. Somebody mosses somebody. They're in the defender's face, and uh, we see a lot of that. So I'm excited. Tomorrow, I'll even throw in this, BJ, and I, hopefully it's happening. But tomorrow, we got... Opening day, softball, lights, your boy, Justin Schultz, yes. huge opportunity. Yeah, we'll be, uh, BNN will be there covering that game tomorrow uh, as well. 6 p.m. start the first conference home game, but also the first official debut of the new lights. So we'll talk about that uh, more. But yeah, tomorrow night, 6 p.m. softball. Looking forward to that. What do we got coming up today on Idaho Sports Talk, Johnny? Idaho Sports Talk. Well, JP is out so, hey, man, when the cat's away, Prater and ball game will play. So we're going to we're going to get after we actually have an interview with the basketball coach in about 15 minutes. Colby Blaine, we're going to pre-record that and get that going for everybody today and talk about his season and um, just keeping up tabs with everything. BJ, you know, typical Idaho sports talk. Me and Prater will get it going. And uh, Bob Beeler will be in studio today, too. So can't wait for three o'clock. We're going to get after it today. Hey, uh, final plug too. Don't forget tomorrow night, Riley and Rid. We're we're at competing shows now here, Johnny, with uh, you and Sanford. Ball talk on Sundays at eight, and now we're adding to our lineup with a different perspective here. Former tight end Riley Smith, former assistant coach Kent Riddle. Riley and Rid will be Thursdays at eight. So tomorrow night at eight, the first episode of Riley and Rid. I guess the first official episode. They did kind of a test episode a couple of weeks ago, but don't miss it. Eight p.m. on Thursdays. Uh, no show tomorrow as of now due to spring practice being at nine o'clock in the morning. I'll be out there at practice. We'll figure that out. But uh, your your BNN football fix tomorrow will come at 8 p.m. with Riley and Rid. Looking forward to that. And then Johnny, Sunday night, you and Sanford will be back at eight o'clock uh, with ball talk. So looking forward to all of that. Jay Tust and I yep. uh, Friday at 9 a.m. So a lot of football coverage here moving forward. We'll be following the basketball transfer portal news as well. Uh, no news yet, but we're seeing Boise State linked to some names of some kids that are in the portal. So Tons of Boise State coverage, and uh, they got you covered there on KTIK, 3 to 6 with Idaho Sports Talk. And obviously, we got you covered here weekdays, 9 a.m., uh, morning, evening, throughout the day, whenever news breaks. We'll have you covered at bronconationnews.com. So, Johnny, appreciate you. Thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to all the sponsors. Go support the sponsors. Keep them happy. Keep them sponsoring us so we can do these shows free of charge for you on social media. We'll be listening 3 o'clock today to Idaho Sports Talk, and uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow, 8 p.m., here on BNN with uh, Riley and Ridd. And then Jay Test and I Friday at 9 a.m. So have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you later. Bronco Nation News Live here at Bronco Nation News.